There are, have been some questions that were written down on the paper, uh, on, the, on the cue cards. There's still the cue cards available if you want to add any question. Um, there's also a mics are available in the, um, if somebody wants to ask it live. So there's been a lot of requests, a number of requests for the, the presentation itself. So the management uh, of the madrasa has that and they also have recorded this as well. Um, so they are going to make it available to you. Inshallah, you can take it from them. Those of you who gave me your email address, um, I would just ask you to please direct your request to, to the management and get the file from them if you want to get a copy of the presentation um, rather than my uh, emailing it to you. There's also some requests for my email address. Um, my email address is um, my last name, Yusuf Ali, Y-U-S-U-F-A-L-I, and then the at sign, and then um, let me give you my Gmail address. It's my last name, Yusuf Ali, Y-U-S-U-F-A-L-I, 789, not 786, Yusuf Ali 789 at gmail.com. So Yusuf Ali, Y-U-S-U-F-A-L-I 789 at gmail.com. But I just want to say um, to those of our sisters who asked for it, that um, uh, I tend to get like a lot of email and my time is very limited. Um, so for personal... Uh, counseling and personal queries if you put them on email unfortunately I just I really have very very limited amount of time to be able to answer um, like personal like requests and detailed personal situations for so for those um, you know maybe if there's a number of them a number of the ladies who would want that um, then maybe we could set up another session where I could come here for example and then we could just set up time to have one-on-one -on -one meetings um, but for to do it all over email I just I really unfortunately don't have the time to be able to do that um, so I would just ask that something else be set up. Maybe you can co coordinate with the management of the madrasa to set up some other type of form for that. Okay. Um, what about the uh, the curriculum that has been imposed in public schools? How do we avoid kids avoid learning, especially at a very small age? Um, this is a very serious issue uh, in public school. Um, th those of us, those of the parents who are choosing to send their children to the public school, um, they need to do so with awareness, with full awareness of what is it that's happening there um, and what is it that their kids are being exposed to. Um, one of them is the curriculum, but that's one among a number of different things that are taking place there. Just, yes, just two days ago or three days ago, I, I was meeting with some students who were telling me about the public school experiences. They were saying that it, it, the, the problems that they have to face, the challenges that they have to face, go beyond just curriculum. Um, they were saying, for example, that they have to play a game where you have to trust in, like basically you, you go around and you're in a circle, you have to trust in the person you're going to fall back. You're going to fall back and you're going to be caught by somebody. You need to trust the person you're going to fall back into. Right? So they were saying that like, there's no issues of, they don't, the teachers don't tell us about boys and girls. Just, you just trust that whatever it is and then you're going to fall into their hands. Um, or they talk about this... Uh, that one, one girl was saying that when we go on field trips, like, they tell us that we have to sit with guys. You know, so I have to actually, like, you know, every time I have to tell the teacher that I want to sit with a girl, I have to trade partners. So there's, there's a lot of issues. I mean, um, the, the curriculum is, j those, the, the sex ed curriculum is just part of the difficulties that our children have to face in public school. Um, there are other issues as well, too. So um, we need to be aware of that. We need to be fully aware of what is it that our children are, are being taught. Um, we need to read the books that they're reading um, and then uh, to point out those passages and those messages and those themes which are contrary to our deen. Um, if you think that, uh, if you, my brothers and sisters think that the way to counter negative messaging is to send our kids to Sunday school um, and that's going to be enough, unfortunately, um, I want to be frank and tell you that you're wrong um, because whatever they learn in English class in school is much more powerful than what they're going to learn in, in Sunday school on Sunday. There's no question. Like your children are being taught um, an ideology through their English programs, right? I mean, there, there's no there, like we have to we have to come to terms with this reality, right? They're being taught a way of thinking, a, taught, a way of approaching it's through stories, through storytelling, through movies, um, through media exposure that they're going to give in the schools, right? So you have to be involved with that. You have to be aware of what is it that they're in the intake and what is it that the, that's, uh, that that is going to result, and you need to be discussing with them at every point teaching them and training them um, to distinguish between what is right and what is wrong. Um, 
and it, it becomes difficult when they're at a very small age to ask them to do some of the challenges, right? So uh, my, my advice to you is to see what you can do to pull them out, to give them alternatives, to, to find alternative environments um, as much as possible. Um, one of the sisters says that I'm a single mom. Um, I don't have any other help. Um, my kids are exposed to Canadian society more time in a day. How do I spend more time with my kids? I work nine to five. Um, they, they need my attention. Uh, my, my heart goes out to the sister who asked that question. I really do feel for your situation. Um, it is very difficult because, um, you know, to not to, to be forced to have to choose between um, spending time with your children who need that time and between um, having to like earn an income, which of course is something which you need to do in order for your children's like survival. Um, but see what you can do um, to uh, make sure that your children are in good hands. Whenever you do send them to some place, you know, if it's an after-school program, try to make it a program which is managed by Muslims, right? Um, try to find good friends for your children. Um, tr see what you can do if you can um, to um, involve them with like you know other groups or other um, venues and forums where they have more time with people who um, they can relate to and, and come from the same basis. Um, in in the Islamic teachings, what we're told is that our close friends should be people who have iman, right? I mean, there is no. In, the, the, with, with all the, all the emphasis that Islam has about being respectful to others, being kind to others, um, you know, to having tolerance, all that in its place, all that is necessary. But when it comes to close friends and close peer groups, the Ahlul Bayt tells us very clearly that those groups have to be people who are mu'minin, right? So we need to um, do what it takes to make sure that um, that is what our kids have in terms of their, the people that they spend time with. Um, what is the alternative to media so kids don't feel that they are out of this world? Um, as I mentioned, uh, reading books, right, can, um, the children can be much, much smarter, like if they're people who read books, rather than um, be just sit in front of the TV and shut off their brain and just like, passively um, take whatever is fed to them. Um, another alternative is to talk to them, right, to take them in the outdoors, right, to teach them about, about the world. It's amazing, the therapeutic effects of going out in nature, right, are just profound. Um, you'll find if you take your kids hiking um, that you'll see the effects of it like in many ways like you'll see that they sleep better that they're more um, disciplined that they they're just more energetic and more enthusiastic children um, so uh, there is alternatives to media if you do want to use media then make sure there's proper media good media like good movies um, and I did mention some of these in that document that I gave the link to in the presentation how to erase the sex education impact that they have learned from public schools. Um, like in grade four last month, my school taught a story book, My Princess Boy. So how to clear this mind about this kind of wrong message? Um, it's very difficult. Like, it's very, very difficult to do that uh, because it's not just the book that's being taught. It's um, a way of you know, understanding the book, a way of you know, how to apply the book's messages to the world around us. Right? And it's being taught by an authority figure. Um, that they, they naturally are going to recognize as an authority. Right? That is the reality that we're facing when we send our kids to public school. Um, so you're not going to be able to erase it. Right? It's impossible um, because that's what's b being fed to them and you're the one who is, who is providing that for them. Now, what's an alternative? An alternative is to pull them away from that. Right? See what you can do to work with the, the administration to see and say, that, okay, this is something this, um, you know, it, it, that I'd like to pull my children out of. Um, and to counter it as much as you can with um, what is the right messaging, what is the right stories, what is the right way of approaching these type of things. Um, if you don't have any other choice and they have to study it, right? Um, meaning that it's a religious, like, like it's, it's a matter of, it's wajib on you to, for some reason, it's, it's a wajib thing for you to send your kids to read these type of books. Like I would say that it's wajib for you to, not, to make them not read the books, but let's say for some reason it's wajib for you to send them to read the book. Um, then make sure you get that book, you bring it home, you read it yourself, and then after they have the discussion at school, you discuss it with your children and say that, okay, on this page, this is what it says, then how do, I, how do we understand it? What is our perspective? And then you can teach them that there's um, how, how it's the case that it may be the case that we differ um, w where when it comes to certain actions that people do, um, we, can, we can say that that's wrong, um, but that doesn't mean that we're against the people. Right? And that's kind of like the best that we can do at that situation, where you separate, you try to separate things. And you say that, look, it, we hope that these people are guided. We really, um, you know, we, we don't have anything against them as a person, but the actions are not what in line with what the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt teach us.
Um, okay, I think that pretty much summarizes the the questions that were. Uh -huh, the last one is this. Yeah. So, shall we educate our children's? Shall we educate our kids um, on not using YouTube? Um, there's a certain age where you can talk about why and why not. Right? You can give the why for the why for why you why you tell your children, your children certain things. Okay, but before that age, you can't really go into details because they're just not mature enough to understand. Um, so definitely, like definitely, like there's a certain age where you can explain to them that okay, look at YouTube. This, this is the thing. This is what they do. This is how they show ads. This is. Um, how they match, you know, and how they how it can be dangerous, right? And you teach them about why it's dangerous, um, for sure. Um, but but there's a certain age where that's appropriate. If you talk about it too much from beforehand, you can actually um, interest them, and you, you're sort of like teaching them something that they don't need to know about at this age, and that can cause that can backfire, you know. So um, you can be monitoring your child usually around the age seven is when they start to like, you know, have enough maturity where you can, they can start to sift through these things and they can understand that, oh, here's something which there's some good about it and there's some bad about it. Before that, you just have to, for the most part, you know, basically say that no, YouTube is not something that you yourself will go on and choose. I'm going to choose it for you. And you put a um, you know, password or a lock on your device, right, so that only you can access that device and you can choose the video for them. Um, what we do at home, just as a, pers just as a tip, we, we have we have a we have a uh, like a TV screen, and we have something called Google Chromecast, which you plug into the TV screen, and whatever we want to display on the TV screen, we can choose that on our phone or our laptop. We can just press a button, and then it gets displayed on that screen. So our children will watch the screen, but we're fully in control of what goes on that screen. There is nobody who's independently like deciding what goes on the screen except for the parents. So it's not connected to any type of cable or any type of TV or antenna or anything. It's purely controlled by what we want to um, have it have be on the screen from our device. And it costs like $50 or $40 or something for that thing. And there's other solutions as well. Um, since it is an era of smartphones, is, it our, is our community doing anything to educate kids um, using those phones? So this was uh, one of the themes that came up in the questions that you asked was, what are we doing to educate our children about media and the use of media? Um, it is something that needs to be taught to our children. Like, um, in one of the responsibilities of Islamic schools and madrasas um, as part of Islamic curriculum is also teaching what is the Islamic teachings regarding media, right? In a way that our children can understand. Um, so that is something that, um, you know, inshallah is being covered in the curriculum. But if it's not, or it needs more coverage, then that's something that inshallah, um, you know, the, the administration's here, they're taking note of it, right? And it is something that inshallah can be addressed as part of the curriculum, because it needs to be um, taught to our students. Like, you know, what is, what is the best practices? And it needs to be taught over multiple years as well, too. Um, and, you know, frankly speaking, like, a lot of this like, gets, can be solved in the form of a discussion, right, with the older ones where you just sit around and you start talking about it and, you, and they begin, become aware of like, you know, well, what is it that's going on? How much, how much of who we are has been dictated to us by like Hollywood and by video games and these type of things about what we think about things. Okay, so those are what I got on in terms of writing. We have about um, a little bit less than 10 minutes. Um, is there any um, questions that you have that you'd like to ask live before we end up the program? So with that, we ask for your du'a. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad.